Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to work on stacking in our inventory. It's going to be a very simple system at first. What we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the item is stackable when we add it. If it is, we're then going to check to see if the item is already in the inventory. If one of that type is already there. If it is, we will add one or however many we're adding to the amount of item in that slot. If it does not exist in the inventory, we will go ahead and just create one uh, like we normally would when we're doing an add item. So it's all there is to it. We will do that, but we need a way to uh, know how many how many of each item is added in each slot. So to do that, what we could do is create a script real quick. I will call this, let's see, uh, item da I, uh, data. That'll work. And this is going to have, it's going to have quite a bit later on, but I think, but for now what we're going to have is just the items in the slot and the amount of items in the slot. So right now we know like what item is in what slot in the back end. We can tell, you know, if we're on index seven, we know what items there because that's index seven of the inventory is an item, but we don't know really right off the bat if we're like hovering over a slot what item is in that slot so we can't really get a tool tip that way and if we are going to use an item we don't know exactly what item we have to do some more checks so a way I want to handle this is I want to store this information per item so if we go to our prefab I'm going to go to add component I'm going to add item data to that now this is going to hold the item information per item in the inventory so if the inventory slot has an item in it, it will also have data for that item. Pretty cool. So go ahead and open that up and start working on it. For now, it has no other use than to, just to hold our stackable items. In the future, this will handle our drag and drop and stuff like that. So the first thing we need is a public item called item. That'll work. It'll just store the item. Very simple. The next thing I need is a public integer that will be amount. How much of that item do we have? Now, see, we could have, in our item database, we could have, like, per item have an amount that we have currently, and update that, but that would be per item and not per slot. We want to be able to have, you know, more per slot later on if we set it up that way. Or have uh, different slots that have different amounts in them, I mean, if we set it up that way. That'll be pretty cool. So, for now, all we need is this right here. It's, it's pretty bare bones, but it'll be fleshed out in the future. What I want to do is I want to have a way to display how many of each item we have in a slot. So I'm going to add, let's see, let's add a slot to the slot panel. Let's add an item to the slot. And now to the item, I want to add something else. So I want to right click on that, go to UI, and I want to add text. I want to call this uh, stack amount. And just for now, I'm going to put seven in there so we can see it. And there it is right there. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, let's go ahead and center this. And I'm going to make sure to this to the bottom right for mine. And I'm going to go ahead and start positioning this where I want it. If we do that, and I'm going to make this, let's see, make it a bold. And I want it to be a white color. But as you can see, that'll be kind of hard to see on a white item. It'll, it won't pop out very well. So what I want to do is I want to add a shadow component to this. And you can see it draws a drop shadow behind that. That's pretty cool. That'll work for now. I do have a, a font I'll be using later on that'll change the way that looks completely. Especially when we use the tooltip because I don't like the default Arial font for that kind of thing. It looks kind of, uh, it looks out of place. So we'll change this as well in the future to the new font. But for now, that'll work. That'll show us what we have, what we're working with. Actually, let's make that a bit... Let's make that a... Like a 16? Either way, that'll work. So now each item has a way to display how many items are in that current slot. And that should work for us. So I want to go ahead and get rid of that. And we are going to apply... Alright, go ahead and delete that. Oh, actually, I didn't want that. I didn't want to do that. I want to make this its own prefab, just like that was. Get rid of that. I will call this item. But slot itself. 
does not have anything in it. Remember, it's two separate, uh, two separate prefabs, so we can add them separately. Add a slot, and if it has an item, add an item. Don't come with a slot, or don't come with an item by default. So make sure we don't uh, mess that up like I just did. Go ahead and delete that. And now let's go back into our scripts here. And we're going to set this up to work, set up our add item method to work with stackables. So we need information first of all. So let's do an if. And we're going to say if the item to add is stackable. So remember, this has information in here for us for stackable. And our database has that information as well, and it's passing it to that, obviously. So what I want to do is I want to make sure the item that we're grabbing is stackable before we do anything stackable with it. So if it is stackable, then we'd come in here and we'd do something, right? So the item stackable, add one to the one that we found, uh, but we didn't find one yet. We don't know if we already have one in the inventory. So we have to set that up to uh, detect if there's already an item in the inventory like that. So what I'll do... This is how I'm going to handle it. You can handle it differently if you want, but this will work just fine. I'm going to do a public and I have to check if item is in inventory. All right, so that's not a good name <laughs> at all, uh, but it'll work for now. And I'm going to pass it uh, an item to check to see if it already exists. Let's see, what I want this to do is I want this to return, hmm. We can have this simply return true or false, or we could have it return the actual slot that has the item in it mm. we'll just have this handled just if it exists or not so we'll have it return a true or false just a boolean so we'll do the same thing here that we did in the item database for fetching an item i'll just set up a for loop here and i'll have let's see it'll be instead of the database entire database we're just going to go through the items in the inventory so that'd be items dot count and if we find one so if we find the items i dot id that equals to the item dot id then that means we already have one in the inventory we already have an item of that id in the inventory so we know that so let's go ahead and return return true so we found it Everything's fine, but we don't have another a return if we don't find anything. So we need to make sure we also do that. So we don't find anything, we're going to turn false. And that would be all we have to do there. So it does find something, good. If it doesn't find anything, bad. And we'll know that. So let's go ahead and go up here and say, and check if item is in inventory. Pass it the item to add. And that will tell us if we already have that item in the inventory. So if we do, then let's go through and... So here's the issue I was talking about before with the uh, making that handle just one situation. If we do this, we're going to be looping through again, looping through the exact same items, looking for the exact same thing. And that's not ideal, but since I've already gone this far with it, we'll just continue with that. Uh, so once again, we're going to do that for loop. It's going to be... What was that? Uh, items dot count. And we're going to say the exact same thing. If uh, if items i dot id is equal to item to add dot id, or just the id that we passed this method, we pass it the same method or the, the same id that we would get from that. So that'd be a bit cheaper on us, and make sure that is a conditional. So if we did find it. What I want to do then is I want to grab the item data component from that. So I'm going to say item data data is equal to, and we'll go to the slots that we're currently on, the slot that we're currently on. I'm going to grab the transform of that, and we're going to get child. We know it's the first child and the only child, so we can get child zero, and that will return the first child and the, in this case, the only child. And I'll get a component. I want to get the item data component from that. And there we go. So now I have access to the item data file on the item that matches the item that we're adding. That's great. So what I'll do then is I'll do data dot amount. It's just plus one for now. You could do add item and you take an ID and an amount to add. So if you're adding a stackable amount, you would do data dot amount plus equals uh, the amount to add. You could do that. Be no problem. We may change that in the future. 
And then, then what I want to do is I want to update the text on the front end to display, you know, how many items we have in that slot. So that'd be data dot transform dot get child once again. And I'm going to get the child zero. As you know, that is the only item or the only child inside the item. It is just that text object we just created. So it should be the only single thing in there. If not, and if you don't know if it's going to be in that order every time, you could just do find child and give it a string to grab. I want to grab the text component of that object. And we're going to set the text value for that. Let's see. The text value for that to be equal to the amount uh, that we have in the item data. So data.amount.toString. It's going to grab that text and update it to equal the amount of data we just had. Cool. So my bet is this is broken somewhere. So let's go ahead and add which item is stackable. The great stick is stackable. So we'll add more of those just to see if it does in fact stack. Let's see. All right. So again, what I did was it, it's working how it's supposed to be, except we did not break out when we found what we were looking for. So we're done. Let's break out of that. We found the item. We added the item and let's move on. So, okay. It's, it did that and that's fine. And it, stopped adding to the amount each time but it continued on so what we have to do now is we have to say if it's not stackable you know else this or else that let's do this so let's go ahead and do that real quick else that else i want you to handle this just like that so go ahead and say let's tab this over there we go so now what we have is we have five of these swords all in one slot now, it doesn't add five swords to the slot. All it does is updates the actual item data. So it says amount, there's five. That's cool. So we know now that when we use an item, we don't just delete the item from the inventory. We have to check to see if it's a stackable item. And if it is, we will remove one from the amount. If the amount is equal to zero after we do that, then we'll delete the item. That's something we'll do in the future, but that's just how we'll handle it when it comes to stackable items. And that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, I'm not completely sure what we'll handle, but we'll probably look into doing drag and drop. I think that'll be the next thing. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, this series is supported by my Patreon campaign, Awful Media on Patreon. There is a link in the description below. If you guys can support me, that'd be great. It would help me produce these videos at a much higher rate and get them done quicker for you. Give me more time to do that. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin and I will see you next time.